Hello everyone. I'm probably, I probably got my audio set wrong, so bear with me for just a second. There might be some echo, I know. Uh, so, here we are. We are live today, sort of. There we go. Okay, my audio is fine. Okay. So, hello everybody. I know it's been a while since I broadcasted. I appreciate you um, being patient with me while I was not broadcasting. You know, it's it's just the whole thing. It's just, it's really challenging to be creative and, you know, do all of that stuff under such immense um, pressure and anxiety. And I know that some are able to maintain that and that's awesome. Some of you are painting every single day and, you know, that's cool. And I am very jealous of you. I'm not. <laughs> In fact, I went for about a week where I didn't really paint anything at all. So um, I am here today. I don't know if I'll be here next week, but I'm here today and that's what counts. And you guys are here today with me. So um, like I said, today is live-ish. So I am live and I will be giving you live instruction. However, the painting that you're going to watch is recorded. So I am not actually painting today. Um, but I said it was a mystery ish because I'm not going to make you just watch it come to life. I'm going to show you what we're painting right now since it's already done. So here's what we're painting today. The, um, all of the materials are in the video description. Please remember that none of the materials, none of the brands, none of the colors, nothing is required. If you don't have something that I listed there, use something else. It's, it's not going to dramatically change things. It's just going to give it your own personal look. Okay, so don't waste your time trying to, what if I don't have this? Can I mix it? Can I do this? Just do what you have. It will be perfect. I promise you. Okay, so here's what we're painting today. I know it's so hard to get a photo of it because of the black canvas. There's a photo at the end of the video. But da -da -da. So, uh, no glazing. I did use matte medium. I do think you probably want to use it, but if you don't have it, you can probably get away without it. So let's go ahead and get started. Uh, we're right here. And yep, so today I'm using my black Fredericks canvas pad. You can absolutely paint a canvas black if you don't have one, but I highly recommend them. I think they're pretty awesome. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and start the video and I'm gonna give you live instructions. So I may not be able to watch chat a whole lot. If you have a question as I go, please put it in all caps because then I'm most likely to see it, okay? Um, but I am giving you live instruction. <laughs> so we'll see how this goes. It might be a total mess, but we'll see. Okay, here we go. Frederick's canvas pad. And I am gonna start with, I think, uh, raw umber. Sorry, I know it catches up there a little bit. It will unfreeze in just a second. I'm using raw umber and Titan Buff. It's essentially the same thing as the Liquitex Unbleached Titanium. I just got tired of it being lumpy, so I decided to try the golden one. I'm mixing just a tiny bit of the Titan Buff in with the raw umber. I'm not trying to get a light brown. I just want to make it barely visible on the black canvas. And I'm using my half inch flat. As you can see, I'm just kind of sketching on where I want things to be. So the little uh, angle right there, the little flat spot is at the top of the path, at the top of the stairs. And then I'm just sketching on the rocks. The main thing here is don't use your paint too thick or too light. If it's too thick or too light, you're gonna have a hard time covering it up later. So, you know, just kind of keep it a little on the dark side. You just barely wanna be able to see it. Nice and thin, use some matte medium if you have it, because the darker and the thinner this paint is, the easier it's gonna be to cover it later. 
So I'm just sketching out where I want some rocks. I did use a reference photo for this um, as kind of a starting point and there's a large rock on the side of the steps so that's what I'm doing here. But I don't intend for you guys to, you don't have to try and mimic every single brush stroke that I do here. Use this as kind of a jumping off point and you know, do it however you want. If I have a large rock over here and you don't really like that or it doesn't spatially make sense to you, don't do it. My steps are a little more narrow up at the top and much wider as it curves down around. That brings them closer to us at the bottom. If you don't narrow your steps at the top there, you're gonna have it's going to be weird. It's going to be all the same all the way up to the top. It's going to be, seem very, very short. Just kind of dashing in a few little spots where I think I want to put some rocks with that same color mixture. And a couple, you can see in the back there, a little tree. I put a, a bit of a right here. Can you see my mouse? Right there, just sketching in a little tree for the distant forest area. Again, it's that thin, dark, transparent paint. Just scumbling in a little bit of that leftover paint that's on my brush so that where the leaves break, it's not just black and boring underneath it. There's a little bit of texture or something going on. Makes the forest floor feel very dense, very overgrown. Just a little more of that color there for the kind of the underbrush area. Now I'm gonna use some Indenthrine Blue. Again, not required some Payne's Gray. I just wanted to use the blue with the Payne's Gray so that it was I could get it a little bit cooler. If you wanted to just use straight Payne's Gray, you could. Again, it doesn't matter what color of blue you use. I would just avoid using a light blue like Cerulean. Any other blue is gonna be fine. I'm mixing a little matte medium in there. The Payne's Gray in and three mixture, there's a tiny bit of white. And I'm gonna start sketching out, whoops, let me just turn that off. I'm gonna start sketching out the top of the stairs. But I'm doing it very, very loosely. See how dark that is? These are really just placeholders for the top of the stairs. I'm just kinda of scrubbing them in, no hard lines, just, they're, they're very blurry, very just kinda of general lines. Remember that our stairs are made of old stones and if you put too much time and energy into these stairs and make them very rigid, very angular, very regular, very sharp, they're, they're going to seem much newer. They're going to seem kind of plopped into the forest. They're not going to seem like they've been there for decades and you know hundreds of years or whatever. So just, just scumble them on there. I know that the temptation is really strong to be very specific with these stairs, but I promise you that it's okay to be very, you know, very loose like this. And as you'll see in a little bit, my stairs almost blend together. <laughs> and that might be kind of scary for you, but don't let it be scary. Just go with it. I promise it'll be okay. Let me move my mouse there. Uh, just scumbling a little bit of that same color into the rocks just to kind of get that started. And the little rocks that I want up at the top and and in the, the grass on the ground. And I guess I can come back on the screen now. Hello! It's kind of weird giving you the, the uh, instruction live, but having the video be recorded. It's kind of weird. And there's that little rock on the right there. I didn't put any on that top corner rock because I wanted it to be covered kind of mossy. So I didn't put any of this in there. Little more of the Titan Buff or the Unbleached. 
and I'm going to change the temperature of this color. I'm going to add some of that raw umber. Again, any brown you want to use is perfectly fine. It doesn't have to be raw umber. That's just my preference. And I'm going to do the same thing. I'm just loosely sketching in some of this slightly lighter, warmer color onto the top of the stairs. The more layers you can add into these stairs, the more the more textured and lifelike they're going to seem. Lifelike, you know, rocks aren't alive, but I mean true to life. They're going to seem a little bit more realistic. If you can add some layers in there with different colors, different temperatures, different, uh, you know, values, uh, light and dark. See, not trying to cover everything. I do have the edge of the stairs on the left. The, the corner is a little bit more defined, but it's still very loose. On the right, I know when you're looking at me, I'm right and left is backwards. On the right hand side of the stairs, how it just kind of fades out, that's because I'm gonna have quite a bit of the foliage that comes up over top of the stairs. So I don't need to put a bunch of attention into those. If I put too much attention and, and shape into that edge, it's gonna be harder to make the foliage seem like it's really growing over it and taking over it. <laughs> I've been wanting to do a stairs a video like this for a while. In fact, before I came home for this whole coronavirus thing, um, I had a bunch of images on my computer there for some inspiration for a painting like this. And then I totally forgot about it um, until this week. And I thought, oh yeah, I was going to do that. So here we are. I want you guys to know that every week, I do sit down and think, okay, is can I do a video this week? Is there something I can do? Is there something that I'm feeling? You know, and so even though I don't have a video for you every week, it doesn't mean that I don't try every week. Uh, you know, things are just rough right now. Notice how I'm holding my paintbrush. So I just showed you there. Hold it at the end like this. Don't don't tighten up and do this, guys. You're really going to make it um, harder on yourself to get the look that you want. If you're trying to do your stairs like this, you're going to get very rigid looking stairs. So trust yourself. Hold your brush way far back and do it that way. The more you trust yourself and allow yourself to do that, the easier it's going to be and you'll start to see the value in it. Again, this is just a slightly lighter color and I'm applying the exact same way, just dashing it. Notice that my stairs aren't even flat. They've got some bends and some wobbles. Just really let them get a lot of life into them, a lot of personality and texture. And I'm really glad that you guys are all here with me today. That makes me happy. I have needed this, but you know, I'm not gonna just jump on here and you know, without having something to share with you. So I'm glad that I have something to share with you to, to be here with you all today. Yes, be, sorry, my dishwasher's done. <laughs> the trials and tribulations of of painting at home. Um, this is a really good painting to practice being loose on because I think if you tighten up on this painting, it's going to feel forced. It's going to feel phony. But I bet with this painting, you could go so loose that it makes you super uncomfortable and it will look good. Now here, notice I'm taking just a hint of that light color. It's got a lot of matte medium in it, so it's very transparent. And I'm very lightly dry brushing it on the vertical face of the stairs. So this is what I was talking about where my stairs, I almost lose them. It's almost just like a big gray, <laughs> you know, there's no definition and it's okay. You want to do that. 
Now I'm using a quarter inch angle and I just picked up Payne's Gray. I did mix some matte medium into it. And I'm just scumbling out that far edge where I want the stairs to disappear under the foliage. And I'm lightly scumbling some of that color on the vertical face of the stairs. So it's along that right hand side, kind of fading over and then on the vertical face. And because I'm using Payne's Gray, which is already transparent, I'm using matte medium, which makes it more transparent. And I'm kind of scumbling all of that light color that I just put on the face. It's not going to be obliterated. So it's not pointless that I did it. You're still going to see uh, little bits of that pop through that dark color, which is again, just going to add to the texture and um, make it, you know, a little more lifelike. You don't want those faces to be black, but you do want them to be darker, but still maintain some of that texture. See how it's very, very dark there. There's almost a hard line where the, the vertical face meets the horizontal face. There's almost a hard line, but still not quite. Very few hard lines, next to no hard lines in here. Oh, speaking of brushes, my brushes have not been available because they are stored at my studio and I'm not spending any time at my studio. I'm spending little to no time outside of my house if I can help it. But later this week, I am going to have a sale on my brushes only for 24 hours, so not for very long. I don't know when they'll be available again. Um, it's not going to be a very big sale, probably 10%. Um, I, I'm not sure what day that's going to be yet though, but, um, yeah, I'll have a 24 hour sale. So make sure you watch my Facebook and my Instagram. And if you miss them during this 24 hour sale, they'll be back, but I don't know when, as soon as I can, you know, feel comfortable to spend some time at my studio, um, after my sale, this week, I'm going to go in super early, like six o'clock in the morning so I can just like bust out the orders, hopefully in, you know, a couple of hours and get them out to you and then come home and have my little panic attack from being outside of the house for so long and, <laughs> and, uh, you know, hope to do it again sometime soon. But yeah, so watch for that. I ship my brushes worldwide. So they will go wherever you are. Still just working on lightly scumbling in that transparent Payne's Gray here. If you don't have Payne's Gray, I would not recommend you use Mars Black. Mars Black is going to take over the universe. In fact, I really don't use Mars Black like at all <laughs> anymore. I don't. I think the last time I used Mars Black was probably like for a black and white painting, I would. Um, but it's just, it's so aggressive. It's such a strong color. It will wipe everything out. And for glazing like this, it turns brown. It's, it's very, very brown. Um, so I don't use Mars Black for anything like this. I like the Payne's Gray because it's very soft. It's transparent. It's nice and cool, and so that makes it good for shadowing and, and things like that. If you don't have Payne's Gray, um, you can make Payne's Gray many, many ways. There's so many ways you can do it. Um, I would recommend using a, a very warm blue, like Indenthrine, or... Uh, or ultramarine and mixing it with something like burnt umber or burnt sienna and that will make you a that will make you a Payne's gray but Payne's gray is the best it is it's so good i use 
I use, uh, I use quite a bit of Payne's Gray. If I need black, if my brain says we need black, then I just use Payne's Gray. <laughs> But in my personal paintings, I really don't even use Payne's Gray anymore. Um, I like the challenge of trying to figure out how to make black without Payne's Gray or black. Now I'm going to use Burnt Sienna and Cad Yellow Light. I just liked the way the Cad Yellow Light made a vibrant green, but Cad Yellow Medium is going to work just fine too. I'm mixing my Indenthrain and my Burnt Sienna. And then pulling in just a hint of that yellow, I want a color that is almost black. This color is very, very dark. It's just barely green. And I put a little bit of matte medium in it again so it's nice and transparent. You know, you can't see this real well because everything is so dark, but I'm just very loosely scumbling this very, very dark green into the places where I know I want it to be green. So that's all I'm doing here. I'm just scumbling some of that super dark green in. The reason I mix the Burnt Sienna in there with it is because the Indenthrine and the Cad Yellow Light by themselves make a very bright, very vibrant green. But that Burnt Sienna kind of pushes that back a little and it makes it a little bit more earthy, a little more natural. And the Burnt Sienna and the Indenthrine will make a, a chromatic black like we were talking about. You could use that mixture as Payne's Gray. Uh, so it doesn't get too vibrant for this first part when I add the yellow. And see how I'm just scumbling, just scribble. Don't, never be afraid to scribble, guys. Scribbling is the best. And see how I'm scribbling it over the edge of those steps. Don't try to keep those two elements apart. Scribble that green over top of the edge of those steps. And just a little back up here. Little hints of it on the rocks so it feels like moss. Oop. I'm going to shut my face off for a second. Everything is just a placeholder at this point. If you put a brush stroke somewhere and you think, oh, I don't actually want that color there, it doesn't matter. Just move on. It will cover later. Oh, sorry, my mouse was still showing. Nope, no orders for brushes today. Sorry, guys. <laughs> It'll be later this week. They're not available right now. If you go to my website, you won't even see them. It will be, I don't know what day, later this week sometime. Okay, going to my long liner, and I'm getting that brown buff mixture that I used earlier when I was blocking everything in. I'm just getting a little bit of that very dark color on my long liner. And I did put a little matte medium in it. Again, holding the brush at the very end. I'll zoom you in here in just a second. I'm just kind of scribbling in a couple of lines so it looks like sticks or twigs or whatever kind of coming up underneath the foliage. I know you really can't see much because this color is very dark, but I promise it shows up in the finished painting. You can definitely see it. So this is that area where I scumbled that little bit of brown. Just putting a little twigs in there, little twiggy bits. And up here in the forest area, the same thing, just some very loose branches if the lines break, that's okay. We want it to seem very dark, very deep. And so if your lines are very bright and very sharp and very specific, it's gonna throw that look off. It's gonna look like there's maybe a hard spotlight on the forest. So just some little scumbly lines here and there. Don't get overly specific with it. 
scumbling in a little highlight on that tree trunk. I pulled it all the way down into the foreground. I decided later, I decided I didn't like that, but I didn't worry about that here. I, it easily covers up as you'll see in a few minutes. No, I probably won't be sending out an email. I lost my entire mailing list a while back. And um, so I was mad at the app that I was paying for that was supposed to maintain my mailing list. So I stopped paying for it. So that's why you guys don't get emails anymore. I'm sorry. Okay, I'm back to that very dark green. It's very thin, lots of matte medium, and I'm just loosely scumbling it back here. You can you can't see the green, but you can see where the where the wet paint is on this dry black canvas. So you can tell I'm just being very super loose with it. I'm not trying to fill in the whole area. I'm not trying to get rid of brush strokes. That's it. Super loose. Once the painting is dry and done, you can see that just enough that it gives the illusion of depth in, in the painting because it's just different from the black in the background. Just barely different, but it's enough different. I think sometimes we think it has to be very dramatically different, very vibrant to be considered green, but sometimes Sometimes having a color that is so subtle that the difference is almost imperceptible creates a huge impact and there's no need to go overly bright to, to get that color across. Same green mixture, the brown, the blue, and the yellow. It's just ever so slightly got a little bit more yellow to it, so it's a little bit brighter putting little hints of that mossy stuff on this big rock. Back to my quarter angle, little Payne's gray, tiny bit of inanthrene. What are we doing here? I don't even remember. I recorded this uh, last week sometime, late last week. So I don't even remember what I did. Mixed it in with the Titan Buff, a little bit of my Burnt Sienna, just to kind of get a neutrally gray type color. And a little bit of matte medium. And that wasn't quite light enough, a little more of the unbleached. You could just use plain white if you like, that's fine too. And up on the top of the rocks again. Notice I'm applying this paint a little bit thicker. The paint is a little heavier. I'm not scrubbing it out so much. I'm just kind of putting it on and letting it stick where it, where it is. And it's building the light and it's building the texture on those rocks. Don't be afraid of your highlights and shadows. I know sometimes people can get afraid to go too light or go too dark, but especially when you're painting in layers like this, there's no reason to be afraid of that. Just build it slowly. You know, you don't want to start with a black base and then immediately, bam, white. That's going to be kind of flat and lifeless and shocking. Slowly build toward it. It's okay if your lightest color ends up being white and your darkest color ends up being black, but build. Make sure that that build is gradual so that you can maintain that texture and not just flatten everything out. But see how that color, it's not just gray. Like when you look at the finished painting, it might look like the stairs are made of, you know, black and white. But, and so you might think, well, I'm just gonna take Mars black and titanium white and, and have at it. But there's, there's none of that in here. There's no white, there's no black. It's blue and brown, a little bit of Payne's gray, some off-white. And 
and I'm just taking that dirty brush going right into the the buff. I keep wanting to say unbleached. It essentially is unbleached, but but I am using the the golden buff. So far I like the texture of it better. It just seems like the last several tubes of the Liquitex unbleached I bought, they were lumpy and my last one, I bought a big tube of it and I had to throw about a quarter of the tube away because it was just like plastic at that point. Little matte medium, just very loosely scumbling some of that light color on. Don't be afraid of it going too light because I did let this color get too light, like too light too much, but I, I did it on purpose. And so I'm gonna show you how to take care of that if you're like, oh no, my stairs are too light. Just go with it. See, that was aggressive. That was like straight buff. <laughs> I hope you can't hear my stomach growling. <laughs> Sometimes my stomach growls when I'm like recording audio. One day it was like growling constantly and I was like, oh no, they're gonna be able to hear it. And now I'm live and my stomach is growling. So I apologize if you hear my stomach growling. <laughs> But see how that color, it's almost the pure buff. So it's dramatically different from the pure black of the canvas. But because we, we slowly work toward it, it's not shocking and, and out of place. Back to my half inch flat. And a little bit more of that in and Threen Payne's Gray buff mixture. Matte medium, because I like things to be nice and transparent. And again, I'm just gonna work on the the highlights and the texture of the rocks, that color wasn't light enough, so I'm just gonna mix a little bit more of the buff into it. See how blue that is. Blue grays are really good for shadow colors on rocks, and then warm grays are gonna be really good for the highlight side of rocks. So that's why I'm using the Innanthreen and the Burnt Sienna to um, shift the color, shift the temperature of my rocks. Don't forget the little rocks there in the grass. Oops, let me shut my face off so you can see that, sorry. <laughs> Just adding a few highlights into that area. Don't never be afraid to smear paint with your finger. Sitting on a kitchen chair to paint and it's really not the most comfortable thing in the world. A little more brown and the buff. We're gonna warm this color up a bit more. And so see, notice how I put kind of the blue on one side and the brown on the other side and it just creates a, a shadow and a highlight side to the rocks. I kind of messed with this large rock for a while and you know just played with where the highlights and where the shadows were gonna go so don't feel like you have to get it right the first time because it can always be changed I'm just gonna lighten that color up again and still messing with the the highlights on this large rock
I love the way the highlights really made those rocks come alive, especially that big one at the, the top left. Just some, you know, a dash of a color is all you need. Your brain will fill in the rest. Back to my half inch and just Payne's Gray. No matte medium, no other color, just a little Payne's Gray and I'm like dry brushing, kind of scumbling on this rock to keep that texture and it knocks back some of the areas where I feel like the, the highlight might have been a little aggressive. If you feel like it's not fading into the black of the canvas enough, a little Payne's Gray and just scumble anything out and you can cover it that way. But notice I didn't try to cover every speck of this canvas. If I used a white canvas here, I think you'd probably see that there's about 25% of the canvas that I didn't cover with paint. A little more buff and a hint of that brown. It's a very light color. Just working those highlights again. Very small brush strokes. See how being loose with your brush strokes there makes your rocks seem more realistic. I know some of you are blenders and like to, you know, make everything look really smooth and get rid of all the brush strokes, but rocks don't, they don't always look like that. <laughs> if you get really blendy and smooth on here, these rocks are going to, they're going to feel, they're going to feel really fake. Let those brush strokes do their job. They're so helpful at creating texture. Sometimes I'm glad you can see my mouse. Sometimes I'm sorry that you can because <laughs> it covers things up. Back to my quarter inch, a little bit of Payne's Gray and some matte medium. I want this Payne's Gray to be quite transparent. And again, I'm just lightly scumbling in some of that dark Payne's Gray Really make sure that the shadows on the vertical face is dark, but also I can dry brush a little bit of it over anything that I felt like was too light. And it adds a little bit of texture as well as knocking back some of those overly aggressive highlights. But don't blob your paint down on here. If you blob your paint down on here, you're just gonna cover things. And then there's no sense in painting in layers if you're just going to completely, you know, do away with the previous layer. Don't be unsure, anybody. I know I see some of you guys saying that, you know, you want to do it, but you're nervous or, you know, feel like you might be too new or whatever, but just go for it. You never know until you try right scoop myself over a little bit um yeah it, there's no sense in there's there's no harm in trying something even if you feel like you're not ready for it the worst thing that could happen is that you could learn something you know I zoomed you out here so you could kind of see how they're all starting to come together. See how those bottom three steps, they have a little bit more texture and vibrancy to them than the steps above. So that's kind of a reminder that when you're working on your painting, we get micro focused. You know, we've got our paintbrush like this and we're looking at only this part and then we move to this part and these are the only parts we're looking at. But if we stand back, you know, and, and look at overall how what we're doing is affecting everything, then we get a better idea. Sometimes if you're right here, you're like, oh, that looks terrible, that looks so bad, that looks so bad, that looks so bad, and you keep going, and then you're done, you stand back and you're like, that's perfect, that's awesome. 
you know, but you don't know until you stand back. Likewise, this has happened to me many times where I'm painting and I'm right here in it. And I'm like, oh man, this looks awesome. This is so cool. Yes, this is the best. And then I back up and I'm like, what did I do that looks horrible? But remember that if you go to a gallery, you're not going to stand like this with your nose right in the painting and look at, you know, we're not looking at a painting in a gallery like that. So you can't only look at your painting like that when you're painting it. You have to stand back. <laughs> yeah, drowning in micro focus. That's a good way to put it. I've definitely been there. But as soon as you realize, if, as soon as you see the value in standing back, in not micro-focusing, it becomes easier not to do it. <laughs> a little bit of that lighter color, again, still just on my little quarter inch because I want to just have a little bit more control of where that paint goes. The smaller brush helps me just work on the the texture a little bit more look at that I'm just scribbling it on just just scribble it guys I know some some of you scribbling is very scary or you just don't like it or whatever but scribbling look at that that's just straight scribbling and I love it it's, I love to scribble now I'm like that wiggle lady have you guys seen that I love to wiggle <laughs> she's got the the sponges and she's like doing the little wiggle thing on the paper if you haven't seen the wiggle lady just go look on youtube when we're done of course i love to wiggle <laughs> and now i'm probably going to be a meme i just love to scrub i love to scribble what's a fuzzbert brush oh Susie, you're about to meet fuzzbert he's coming out soon No, scribble's not hard to do, Deb. Not at all. It's the easiest, most natural thing to do. Think about when little kids. What did they do? They immediately start scribbling. And then we're taught not to scribble. Um, you know? But it's the most natural thing to do. So just let yourself do it. Just adding some brighter highlights on the areas that I want the rocks to seem, you know, the brightest. <laughs> Don't add your right highlights on the areas of the rocks you want to seem darkest in shadow, obviously. So I think I'm only picking up the buff with that, but I had a dirty brush, but it was still pretty light. This is a little bit of both of my browns. So my raw umber and my burnt sienna, a little bit of the buff. I just wanted a kind of a light brown color, very transparent with the matte medium. Again, just knocking in some of those, uh, kind of like the, I wanted it to seem like uh, grass or like dried grass or dirt or something. I'm gonna put a bunch of leaves in that area and I didn't want it to just be black underneath the leaves. This color is super transparent. I know it looks really white there, but it's because there's so much matte medium in it. As it dries, it goes very transparent. You can barely see where that even was. Now a, a fan brush and it's dry. You wanna use your fan brush, fan brush dry here. I'm getting both my Indenthrine and the Burnt Sienna, just on one corner. And then I'm gonna grab just a hint of yellow. I want a nice, uh, I think I go lighter, yeah. A little more yellow. It's just kind of a nice warm green because of that Burnt Sienna. And now I'm going to start adding kind of that mossy texture. I'm gonna zoom you in here, there we go. 
that mossy texture on top of the rock. So if you're afraid of the fan brush, this is the perfect one for you. All I'm doing is crushing that corner in, guys. This. I'm just going like that. I'm just mushing the corner. Nothing fancy. Don't use the whole end of it and make that weird eyelash shape. Don't do that. Nobody wants that. Just mush that corner and let the, the texture of the dry brush and the paint do the work for you. Same thing here. Let it be wild, let it be crazy. It's supposed to be overgrown moss or grass or weeds or whatever. Don't make it smooth. There's no smooth in the forest, in the overgrown forest grass and moss doesn't go, okay, perfectly smooth, guys, no texture. Same thing back here, just adding a little bit of that on this side of the, the path. Tiny specks on that rock. I'm not really taking my brush off of the canvas as I'm bouncing like that. So it's going like this. See how it's still on my finger? So I'm not going dab, dab, dab. It's kind of like that. So it is dragging a little bit and blurring it just a little bit. Uh, back to my long liner with that uh, brown buff mixture so it's very transparent it looks really really pale there because compared to the black it is but it's still it's mostly brown with just a hint of the buff in it just a few more sticks here and there both in the background where the trees are growing and on the ground We've only got about 20, 24 minutes or so left in this video. So we're, we're coming up on the end. Once we're done, um, then I'll chat with you for a minute more. But yeah, we're coming up on the end. So this is Fuzzbert, guys. For those of you who don't know, Fuzzbert is my number eight Filbert who I have scrubbed to death. <laughs> he is super puffy and messy. I'm just getting my green color again. It might be a little lighter than than my previous green color. My phone is ringing. There. Um, I'm trying to find Fuzzbert so I can show you. And I'm just using him to kind of scribble out some little grassy textures. I am of the mind that scrubbed out old brushes are perfect brushes. There's no need to ever throw a brush in the garbage. The scrubbier they get, the better they are at doing their job. I don't know where my fuzzbur went. Oh, sad. Somebody broke into my house and stole fuzzbur. Um, I really don't know where he went. Anyway, oh, there he is. Yeah, see, so I'm using how scrubbed out and, um, and puffy he is to my advantage because that helps me get the texture that I want. See, I'm taking that over top of the edge of the stairs. Let those grasses grow into the stairs. I know, guys, I know that the shipping and customs are really expensive. Um, customs is not something I have any control over. I. I wish I could do something for you on that. I have no control over that. Shipping, please understand that the vast majority of you, it costs me more to ship your brushes than what you paid for shipping. So especially when you factor in my mailers cost money, my labels, those labels that I put on those are expensive. So, but yeah, the vast majority of you pay, pay more than I pay for your shipping, or you pay less than I pay 
for your shipping. So I know I wish that shipping internationally wasn't, you know, the pain that it is, but it is. Uh, we'll go up here, say hi up here for a second, and then I'll probably just shut my face off again. Um, yeah, so here's my Fuzzbird. This is Fuzzbird that I'm using there. See how puffy and wild he is? He used to be a nice, sharp filbert. Now he's he's got tons of bristles that come out and like curl under like that on the sides. Um, yeah, absolutely. If you just take a brush that you're okay with being a scrubbing brush and start scrubbing with it, it will get better and better and better at its job as you go, I promise. Um, I know some people are hesitant to scrub with brushes because they don't want to ruin them. But honestly, it depends on how you paint. Like, I'm a scrubber. So I always try to keep a brush. You know, I have two of all of my brushes and I try to keep, this is going to be my nice one and this is going to be my scrub one. Well, they all end up being scrub ones because I just scrub. And I might start with a nice brush and think, oh, I'm just going to use this brush because it's nice. And pretty soon I'm scrubbing with it. And I'm like, okay, well, it's now it's a scrub brush. <laughs> I'm adding some more of the burnt sienna to that green. And see how it looks really muddy there. But once I put it on the canvas, you'll see it just looks like a warmer version of green. If you use just the same green, it can really just flatten everything out. You've got one green, dark to light, and that it doesn't add quite as much life or, as, or excitement as you think it might. <laughs> so I like to use, you know, warm greens, cool greens, light greens, dark greens. Green can very easily get boring. See, just little pops of that warm red green in the moss on the rocks, in the grasses. Just keeps things looking a little bit more vibrant. I'm going to turn my face off. There we go. Scribble some up here into that mossy area. A little bit more yellow, uh, more of a blue green this time. If you notice, I pulled in a little bit more indenthrine. And we're gonna start brightening up some of these mossy areas. Just kind of scumbling around with Fuzzbert, getting a really, you know, choppy kind of, it looks like that moss that you see that, that's really soft. It's the kind of moss that you want to run your hand over. That's kind of what I was going for there. That stuff that looks a little wooly. Lighten that up a little bit more with some more yellow. Nice and vibrant. And I like to stab Fuzzbird a little bit to splay out the bristles a bit more. And I'm just gonna, I'm gonna lighten it up again. But notice whenever I go lighter, whenever I go a little bit lighter, I don't cover it quite as much. Hello again. <laughs> So when I bring in the lighter color, I'm not applying it all over the entire shape because that's just going to cover everything up. The lighter I go, the less of it I start to apply and that lets all of the other colors and values underneath shine through. It creates that depth and, you know, kind of the density to the, to whatever it is you're painting. In this case, it's moss, but it would work the same way for rocks, for bark, for hair for whatever. And 
<laughs> the one highlight that brings it all to life. Not yet, man. Wait until you see my favorite highlights. There's one highlight area, well, the, the last one that I'm like, yes, that is the color that I needed in this painting. Yep, scribbling and bouncing and dabbing, absolutely. Don't get hung up on a single brush stroke and, you know, mix it up. Scribble, scumble, swipe, smear, dab, bounce, dot, all of it. Do all of the different things. Yeah, Pat, I was thinking, yeah, this... It's very, it's very much like the mushroom painting. And in fact, after I did it, I thought, oh, is it too much like the mushroom painting? Still using Fuzzbert in the green and I'm very lightly just dashing in a little bit of this color into the background for trees. See how it's really, it's the same thing. It's just a scribble, but off to an angle. I'm not trying to make tree branches. I'm not trying to make leaves. I'm just kind of doing little bits of scumbling with this color and it is going to darken a little bit as it dries. Little scumbly bits here and there. Don't go too bright here. If you go too bright, it's going to clash with that background. A little bit more yellow. We're going to lighten it just a little bit. And I'm just going to add a few little poke of highlights here and there on those bits that I just added. So Gretchen, it's not necessarily about using very little paint. It's about not using globs of paint. You don't want your paint to be globbed you know, big blobs of paint hanging off, and you don't want to deposit all of the paint that's on your brush in one spot. So it's about not having globs, and it's about using a little bit of a light touch, at least at first, you know, to avoid, to avoid that glob. As you start scrubbing some of it off, you can use a heavier touch to get some of that other paint on your, on your brush. See how that's starting to look like a deep forest and there's very little effort that went into that. Let's uh, kind of red that color a little bit. I added a bit more of the burnt sienna to it, just changing the temperature. And adding some, these are kind of highlights. It's a little lighter, but it's also a little warmer again. Now you can kind of see how those little sticky bits that I did with the long liner, it just adds another dimension. It keeps it from looking just like a green fuzz little bit of white in there. This is just the, it's mostly yellow. There's a little bit of that blue brown mixture, but it's mostly yellow, a little bit of white. And again, dabbing a bit onto that, that mossy rock in the back. Hello. <laughs> I feel like I have to announce it whenever I come back. Hi. Yeah, values for sure. Deb says she's making mental notes about the use of values. I think sometimes when we're newer to painting, we, we have a hard time thinking about light and dark and color. We, it's obviously, it's easy to think about light and dark and black and white, but in color, that gets a little bit harder to do. A little bit lighter there, tiny bit more yellow, more white. And this is where I feel like those highlights really start to kind of come alive. So just the more attention you start to pay to 
value in your color, you know, thinking about, okay, well, maybe this should be a lighter green and then experimenting with ways to make the green lighter, the more experience you'll gain in it. I know it can feel frustrating and like you have no idea how to do it, but you, you learn how to do it by doing it and by doing it wrong. <laughs> so, um, that's something that I've been talking about in my, oh yeah, and I haven't even talked about that. Have you guys listened to my podcast? I have a, I have a new podcast. Yay. Um, and my podcast is mostly just about like the type of things that I say to you guys while we're painting. So it's like a painting only without the painting, if that makes sense. It's not about painting technique. Um, I'm not talking about, you know, here's how you paint this or here's an example of what kind of paint you should, it has nothing to do with painting. It's just about creativity. And so it can work for people no matter what kind of creative thing they do. Oh, by the way, this is a dark green. I'm using my number six filbert. This is a nice crisp filbert and I'm just dashing in little leaves. Nice dark color here. Nice and blue. Yeah, sorry, it's called Creative Voice Podcast. Thank you, Tammy. So if you go to my website, it's creativevoicepod.com. Um, you can listen to them all there. It's free to listen to. I've got a Facebook page for it. I've got, do I have a Facebook page for it? I think I do. And I have so many Facebook pages at this point, guys. I don't even know <laughs> what I'm doing. Um, so yeah, I'm still just making those leaves with that dark color. Don't, don't try to shift your, your value or your temperature while you're adding in the base layer. I just added in the base layer of those leaves nice and dark. Now I lightened it just a little bit. I added a tiny bit more yellow and I'm just kind of highlighting. But if you, every time you go back, you get a different mixture. It's just gonna start to look very like scattered and mottled. Oh, thank you so much, Spray Art Eden. Whoa, you're so sweet. Thank you, I appreciate that. Totally not necessary, but I really appreciate it. That's, you're very, very kind. A Little bit lighter there. These leaves were super exciting for me. I loved how much depth was there. And I feel like I achieved that mostly by putting that brown and um, the sticky bits and then the leaves over top of it. I felt like the brown obviously felt very distant. Like you could step into those leaves and they might come up to your, your knees or, or even higher. Still just drawing little grasses. I'm still using that number six filbert. You're welcome. Thank you. I appreciate you. I appreciate every single one of you. Here, I'm going to do a little fern. Don't get too, don't tighten up on this fern, guys. It, that could be really easy to do. So I'm just taking the tip of my filbert and right here, just swoop, just a little line. And then just those same little leaf shapes just dash onto the sides. <laughs> Thank you. The ferny bits were pretty fun. Just don't tighten up on them, guys. If you get really tight on those ferns, they're going to look really tight. You're not going to be happy with them. And I did tighten up on them a little bit in a couple of places, but I feel like I saved it. But I did... I don't know what that sound is. Okay, I think it's a leaf blower. It startled me. It sounded like a <laughs> like an emergency vehicle was going to go blasting past my house. Um, just kind of nudging some more of those little grassy, mossy bits out onto the, onto the steps, adding some grasses. Sorry guys, is that loud? That seems like it would be really loud. A little bit of a lighter color. I'm going to suggest a fern back there, but that's where I feel like I kind of tightened up on those ferns and I was like, mm, that one didn't look good. I'm pretty sure I paint it out later.
It it does sound like the Silent Hill thing, doesn't it? See, very loose. It's almost a scribble, but it's not quite. It's like dash, almost scribble, but more like a dash. All those little grasses around there. Pull it over onto the stairs a bit. What are you doing? <laughs> Sorry, we have like a haunted house door in our house. It sounds like a haunted house. Oh, and bye. Lots of grasses, little scribbles. So those kind of scribbles that I'm doing for the grasses, I like to think of it almost as um, trying to like write really fast in cursive. It's almost like writing in cursive, Quickie, quickly and messily. Nope, this isn't Fuzzbert. Not Fuzzbert at all. <laughs> this is a nice one that I haven't yet scrubbed out. So another fern started out pretty tight, but I got him nice and messy there. And then I had two ferns pointing in the same direction. So just a little bit of a scumble between them. And I felt like that broke it up a bit. Nope, this is not an angle. It's, it's a number six filbert. But you could use an angle. All of my angles are scrubbed. I scrub with angles. But I don't use my number six filbert very often, so it was nice and nice and sharp. It's a nice bird. Exactly. <laughs> a little bit of that highlight color over here, posh bird. <laughs> Exactly, a little matte medium because I felt like that color was too aggressive. So I just put some matte medium on it to thin it out and so I could smear it a little. And same brush, just lightening that color, adding a little bit of white to it also. We're gonna add some nice bright highlights to some of those lower grasses and ferns. And this was kind of one of my favorite parts. I felt like this really gave a lot more life to this area. Go ahead and move my big old face up here, there. I loved painting these leaves and stuff. I usually, I don't have the patience typically to do a lot of leaves and things, which is why we don't do things like that very often. But for some reason it was exactly what I wanted in this painting, it was exactly what I wanted to do and I was enjoying it so much. So who knows, maybe I'll, find a reason to do a bunch of leaves again um, so we can do something like this again but maybe not maybe I'll start trying to do leaves like this on another painting and I'll be like oh that's so tedious I don't want to do that <laughs> which is usually how I feel about it and again lighter I pulled a little more yellow into it and more white Oh, buy spray tan, uh, what was it? Spray art, not spray tan, <laughs> spray art Eden. Thank you so much again and have a good night. Still just working on those little highlights. Loved those highlights. See what I mean about how green can really flatten out and look boring. So right there as the steps go up you can see it's just one color of green that's kind of flat looking, especially as I start adding these highlights and the parts that aren't highlighted, you can see how flat they really look. So it looks like we are just 
about done. So what do you guys think? Did you enjoy this one? Um, like I said, I almost felt bad about it. I almost was like, uh, maybe I don't want to make a video of this. It's so close to the mushroom, but, but I think it's pretty different. More white, more yellow. One more very light. <laughs> Spray our Eden, you're so sweet. Thank you so much. I hope to see you again soon. I hope that I can make another video and come back very soon, guys. Oh, well, thank you, honey, for coming. I know a lot of you guys are hanging out while it's late where you are, and I appreciate that so much. I appreciate all of you, and I loved hanging out with you today, and um, I would love to see what you do with this, so make sure that you uh, tag me on Instagram or on Facebook. Post it in the comments of my most recent post. That's the best way that you're going to get me to see it. Um, yeah, because I would love to see what you do with it. And if you do it different, if you use different colors or, or whatever, I would love to hear how you did it different. Remember that you don't need to do anything the way that I do it. I'm just here to encourage you and tell you that you can do it and show you a way that it could be done. But just because I do it a certain way doesn't mean that that's how it is done. That's just how I did it. So you guys can always do it however you want to do it. So there it is. All signed up. Woohoo. Whoops. <laughs> um, oh, I didn't put the image on here. I wanted to put the image on here. Hang on. Don't leave yet. I'm going to go like this, and it just takes me a second so that we have a picture at the very end that you can reference, and I will post it on Facebook also. So here is our finished painting. Whoa, what's happening here? Um, I'll post it on Instagram and Facebook and everything so you can see it later. So there we go. And... Yeah, anyway, I will uh, post on Facebook and Instagram as soon as I know when our 24-hour brush sale is happening. And, oh, uh, it'll be about 10% off. Remember, Patreon gets an extra 10% off, so Patreon's going to get 20% off. Yay! So, okay, I love you guys so much. Thank you for being here with me today, and um, I hope to see you again very very soon i'm really hoping for next week but we will see how that goes so have a good week everybody i will talk to you later bye